All right. Hey, everybody. I'm ready to get rolling on some pouring. I've got me two 11 by 14 canvases, and they're butted up against each other long ways. And I have a dowel to put in the middle here. Some people use a long paint brush. I don't have many long ones, so I, I had a dowel, I stuck it there. This is based on Elise Fournier's channel on YouTube. She's got her Facebook page. She's been a huge inspiration to a lot of people. So I am going to try her pour. And of course, I don't really know her exact recipe, so I just mixed up my own recipe. I'm not using silicone. So the colors I'm going to use today are all deco art, and most of them will come in two ounce bottles. Sometimes I get eight ounce, sometimes 16 ounce bottles, but they're all deco art. Craft paints. This is True Blue Dioxazine Purple, Prussian Blue, the Deep Burgundy here, Primary Red, Orange Flame, True Ochre, and Cadmium Yellow. And all of those will be posted below the video so you'll have a reference to what colors I used. And what I'm going to do is a gradient pour in my cup. So what I'm going to do is layer up the colors in my cup in a gradient fashion. So what's going to happen is you will, I'll layer each color on top of the other color but not, and try not to let it sink down into the other colors. So I got my canvases set up and I did a ratio. These are all mixed. Typically, typically I use one-to-one Oatrol -one, Easy Flow or if you're using Floetrol in the USA, that's wonderful. This is European. It's for those people outside of the United States. One-to-one -one ratio. But I did just a little bit more of this than I typically do. You know, maybe one and a half. It wasn't even really that much. Just a little bit more. And typically I don't add water to deco art paints, but the Oatrol is a little thicker than our Floetrol. So I did add some water to each paint. I did want it a little more on the thinner side. And I've got my big cup of white, which is mixed the same ratio, and it has extra water in it as well. And then what I'm going to do is I have my white in a little cheap squeeze bottle, not my typical nicer squeeze bottles that I love so much. This one is a, just a regular dollar store squeeze bottle. I cut the tip off so it's even bigger than it typically would be because I want it to come out pretty heavy when I do squeeze out the white. And this is going to be what they call, it's like infusing the white paint into the colors or injection. So I've never attempted this before and it may be a total flop. But you know me, I keep on going even if it's a screw up. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to put the colors in in a rainbow effect as well lining my colors up. I want to make sure I've got them in the order I'd like. I think I want to put my purple next to my red. So I'm going to do the Prussian blue, the blue, the dioxazine purple, the burgundy, the red, orange, gold, and yellow. That's the order I want to do in my cup. The other thing I meant to do is I always look at my chart and I keep my chart on my phone to tell me how much paint I need for a certain size canvas. The chart says I need 5 ounces of paint for an 11 by 14 canvas, so I need 10 ounces for both canvases plus a little extra for the sides. This is a 16 ounce cup, so I'm going to go up pretty high on my cup. I'm going to fill it up probably about to that top line there. So I may end up using all of my paints. These are 3 ounce cups. That's 24 ounces. So I really don't even need to use all of it. So I'm going to start the bottom of my cup with a significant amount of white. I probably have a quarter to a half inch of white on the bottom of my cup. 
Some people use the uh, little cups that you use in your kitchen that have the handle and a little bit of a spout. Some people use that. I'm just using a regular cup. So I'm going to pour about half of my paint mixture. I may do two layers of this. I'm not sure. I want to get through one round first. So I, I poured it kind of on a slant. It's kind of like when you pour a soft drink or a beer. I'm not a beer drinker. But I know that if you slant your cup, the foam will not come up as much. And so that's kind of the concept of slanting your cup is you're layering that color, one color, on top of the other. So I'm going to pour the next color on top of that deep blue, and I'm going to pour about half of my cup in. Then the purple. Red. Well, this is the burgundy. This is the red. And you know me, I love my colors, so I decided to go with kind of a rainbow effect. I didn't want to put green into it. And I'm not going to use a ton of orange, because sometimes orange can take over. Okay. So when I turn my cup straight up, it's pretty much almost to that top, but I still am lacking just a little bit, so I'm going to pour in a little white on top, and that gets me to my at least 12 ounces of paint that I need for my canvas. So when I saw her video, she just kind of pours, and she just kind of travels back and forth across this paint stick, dowel, whatever you're using between your two canvases. So I'm just going to start pouring and I'm going to let it fall over both edges of the stick. And then I'm going to travel just back and forth. It doesn't have to be any particular shape or rhyme or reason. You can leave it in the same spot. And I'm going to take it I'm actually going to turn it because I am getting all the colors on one side and I want to make sure there's kind of an even amount of color. And this is so cool it comes out. If you pour too fast, it almost comes out looking like, like ribbon candy. And I probably added too much white just based on what her pour looked like and what mine looks like. My white has come out continuously throughout the whole pour, so I used apparently too much white. But we're going to go ahead and go with it anyway. Because for me, it's just the joy of painting and creating. All right. That's pretty cool looking right there. It basically looks like a tree ring. This looks like a tree ring pour right here, right now, already. So now, well, I'm going to leave my stick. I'm not going to move my stick yet. The next thing that she did was she took her bottle and she injects paint randomly. This is fun because I've never done this before. <laughs> I've got some friends in the studio that are watching me, so they're watching me create this. And they may think I'm crazy and like, what is she doing? And I'm even going to go in. Because I have no idea what this is going to create, but I want it to be something totally different from what I normally do. And then what she did was she added white to the edges. So I'm going to go around with my bottle and just circle the edge of my paint because it's on a dry canvas right now. And then I'm just going to add some white along the edges. And it's just so pretty in the cup. 
It looks like rainbow angel wings in the cup. And then I'm just going to take my hands and spread my white out because I'm going to tilt my canvas and that's going to cover this white to anyway. But if I have a wet surface, it'll just help the paint flow easier across my canvas. So that's why it doesn't matter if it's totally covered, it doesn't have to be even or anything. We're just giving it a wet surface for that paint to glide on. Okay, I'm going to take the stick out. And that stick is so pretty. It is gorgeous. This is really That's okay. I'll let them hear you say it's gorgeous. It I'm just rolling it just for the fun of it to see what it looks like on the paper. Now I'm going to tilt. But I don't want to tilt one on top of the other. So I'm just going to move one canvas out of the way a little bit. And this is basically supposed to look pretty abstract. It's not supposed to be anything like set in stone. It's just supposed to be very abstract. And I might could have gone with thicker layers and you know there's so many things I might could have done differently. But I just was giving it a try the way I felt like I should do it. And I don't want mine to look like hers anyway. I want mine to be uniquely different. And I'm kind of liking that. I love the way the edges are doing. I love this. It's kind of spreading out and bleeding into each other. So that is really, really beautiful. So I'm going to leave this for now and then tilt this one. See, now this won't have as much yellow because it's different colors on this side. But it should kind of have the, the same effect. But I'm trying not to drip on top of my other canvas either. And I kind of want them to, to be able to butt up to each other and look like they go together, but that may not happen. But they will definitely look like they are a set. Yes, it, does. it does, doesn't it? God, look. <laughs> look. I got an audience that's pleased. Oh, that's oh. beautiful. So the question is, do I keep injecting it or do I leave it? I think I kind of like it the way it is. I could keep squirting white into it, but I love, I love the way the gradation of color is right there. So. I think I'm going to leave it, but I am going to finish. Since none of my canvases have sides that are wet, I'm going to put the wet white paint around the edges to make sure all my sides are covered. So it's just one big sloppy mess, but that's okay. Because sloppy messes dry pretty. And, but I am going to do, I'm going to do one thing, because you know me, I can't just leave something untouched. I'm just going to try, just for the fun of it, and see what happens. So I can blow the edges. I don't want to. I don't want to change them too much. I just want to blow here and there sporadically. And I'm blowing very gently, it's just with a very, very gentle breath. And the other thing too when you're blowing is if your paint is dry up to the edge of your paint, that paint will not move because it's a dry canvas. So you have to have wet paint up against it. Okay, I think, I think 
think that is going to be it. I just didn't want any hard edges. I wanted it all to have a soft kind of bleeding, wispy edge and I think that's pretty much done the trick. So I am really, really loving this. Um, and I imagine you could even do this with a dirty pour where you don't do the gradient thing and you just put all your colors in the cup and you pour them over the stick and then you inject the white into it. I think it would be just as lovely. So I don't think it has to be a gradient pour, this, but it, the linear thing does really have a cool effect. It's very kind of abstract and organic feeling or something to me. So I really love it and I love the colors. So I'm very pleased. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I got, I got applause in the background. <laughs> And make sure to check out the links below the video where it says show more on your computer or if you're on your mobile device, there is a down arrow that's below the video. And if you go down below there, you will see the products I used, the colors I used, and there's all kinds of wonderful links for Amazon and PayPal, Patreon, the link to my Facebook group. Come join me over there. Come follow me on Instagram and we can connect. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.